There's this new term called the new rich. And the new rich is not just about having more money. It's about having more time and freedom in our hands. And I've been on this journey in trying to be a part of the new rich. And I've been looking for different principles, different concepts that can help me do that. And I found this interesting topic by Cal Newport written in his book called The Deep Work. And it's basically talking about how can we add or how can we be more focused in doing the work that we have so that we can have more free time on our hands. Now we can talk about how to be more focused by stating the law of productivity. The law of productivity states that high quality work equals time times intensity of focus. Now, of course, we don't want to put in more time in the work that we're doing, but we can increase the intensity of focus that we have. And that's something that we're going to talk about in this video. In the book, Kyle Newport starts talking about the difference between shallow work and deep work. Shallow work is non-cognitively demanding logical style tasks, and it doesn't create much value, much new value in this world, and it is easy to replicate. On the other hand, deep work is work performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that pushes your cognitive abilities to their limits. It creates new value, and it is harder to replicate. Now, why is deep work important? There are three reasons. Number one is that it helps you to focus on what truly matters. When our brains don't focus on the things that we need to do, when we don't apply deep work on the tasks that we need to do, our brain tends to fly or hover around things that are not that important. When we lose focus on the things that we want to have or what we need to do, it goes to a state of thinking about the things that we don't need to do. It goes into the state of thinking about what could possibly go wrong instead of thinking what could possibly go right. The second reason is that it helps you be in the state of flow. Flow is a state where you're just so focused that you don't even feel like you're spending that time, that amount of time working on a thing. You can see this from basketball players, from the top athletes in the world. They call it when you're in the zone. That's exactly what it feels like to be in the flow. The flow that you're doing is basically you're putting yourself in a state where you're just laser focused that you don't even feel like trying or even working. Most of the time, you won't even realize that you're working for two hours, three hours straight on the task or the project that you're working on. I love this because generally flow generates happiness. When you are doing something and you're focused on it, you know that you're getting better at it. You're improving your skills. And when you're doing that, you're allowing yourself to add more dopamine, to increase the happy hormones inside your body, and overall generate more happiness in your life. Now, the third reason why deep work is so important, it helps you do something meaningful. When you're in a state of deep work, you're doing something that matters to you. And when you're doing that, you're basically working on something that is more meaningful, more purposeful, and more satisfying, I could say. Now, our main task is not to generate meaning from the work that we're doing. It's basically to discern the meaning that is already there. A lot of us might think, okay, does deep work only apply to artists, to creatives, to, um, I don't know, thought leaders in this world? No, it applies to everyone. The thing that we need to remember is that we don't need a ratified job to apply deep work. You can apply it whatever job or whatever work that you're doing, and you don't need a ratified job to do it. You just need a ratified approach. You just need to be able to apply deep work in the work that you're doing, whatever it is. Now, where can you basically find deep work? You can find it outside your profession when you're learning a new skill like pottery or learning a new instrument or just learning a new hobby like um, skateboarding or playing basketball. When you're so focused in the task that you're doing, you're basically applying deep work. You can also find this when you're working out at the gym. When you're focused on the muscle that you're working out, that's also a sign of deep work. You can also find this. Other examples include when you're starting a business, when you're starting that side hustle, when you're focused and your brain is cognitively engaged in the activity that you're doing, that also shows deep work. And of course, any creative work that you're doing, it also requires a certain amount of deep work, whether it's photography, writing, um, vlogging, podcasting, creating art in any way that requires deep work. You can find deep work in those activities. And again, when you're doing your work, when it is something that helps you focus, when it is something meaningful to you, when you know it matters to you, when, you, when it helps you be in that state of flow, when you know that you're doing something that can help you reach the goals that you want to achieve, 
anything that is fulfilling and generally satisfying for you, you can find deep work there. Now, I'll be talking about some tips on how you could be more focused using the different strategies and tips here um, in, in this book, but I'll... But there are so many strategies and tips that I won't be discussing. So I recommend reading the book. I know it's kind of thick, but I swear that it's really worth it. So go try it out. Go check it out. Um, I'll link this below where you can buy it so that basically um, you can get one. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about how to be more focused. The first one is to ritualize. Cal Newport talks about the importance of creating new systems that help you apply deep work in your areas. Now, there are different systems available to you. There's no one system that would generally work for all of us. So you gotta make sure that you apply deep work according to the lifestyle that you have. For some people, it works that um, having deep work days or even weeks like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would go into a cabin and work for two uh, and, and be there for two weeks and just think and just read books and apply deep work, right? All his food and his laundry is already prepared. All he gotta do is apply deep work. Now, for most of us, we really can't do that, and so that's okay. We can also apply bimodal philosophy, which is also discussed here, the different philosophies of applying deep work. Some people would like to apply deep work by picking out a day in the week where they will apply deep work. So for example, for Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will apply deep work. For the rest of the day, you're gonna do some shallow work. And don't be ashamed or don't be guilty when you're doing shallow work. At a certain point, shallow work is still very, very important because it allows us to finish all the tasks, all the projects that is necessary for us to achieve the goals that we want to achieve. But going back to the point, you gotta make sure that you adjust deep work according to your lifestyle. And deciding how to ritualize deep work, you you need to be clear with three things. The first one is where you'll work and how long you will work. This is something that is very important to me because I've had a hard time being focused. I have a habit of multitasking and it really destroys my productivity. If you're multitasking, stop that. It's not helping you. And this transition of applying deep work into my life, into my lifestyle, is a bit of a struggle. And that's okay, right? Every start of a change is very difficult at the beginning. But for me, I decided that I would treat focus like a muscle. I can't go to the gym and like push or uh, bench one hundred pounds um, instantly. I would need to train my muscles so that I could get to the point where I could bench 100 pounds. So that's the same with focus. What I did is that for the first time that I was applying deep work, I just said to myself, okay, I'm gonna work on, or I'm gonna apply deep work for 30 minutes straight. I don't need to do it for three hours, four hours. I just need to do it for 30 minutes. And then as the days progress, I said, okay, I'm gonna do it for one hour and then two hours. And then there came a point where I didn't notice that I was doing deep work for four hours straight. And basically that's like the best or the most efficient hours that you can put in the deep work that you're doing. Basically around four hours to five hours, that's all you need to have to have a very efficient and very well focused. And that's enough. You only need like four hours or five hours every single time that you're doing deep work for you to have very meaningful outputs. The second is how you'll work once you start working. You need to have a system. Once you start your deep work, what, what do you need to start on? What do you need to do once you finish that initial task? How will you end your deep work? It's important that you prepare yourself or you be clear with yourself on how you'll do this because it helps you ritualize better. The third one is how you will support your deep work. I would like to take breaks from my work. I apply two hours straight of deep work and then take 20 minutes break or 15 minutes break. And what I do is I take a short walk or I go outside, I get some fresh air, I get some, I don't know, I just look at something outside with the nature, talk to a lot of people. I don't go on social media as much as I can because it just helps me be actively, you know, meditating throughout the, the things that I need to do. It's just allowing me to breathe. So that's a support that also helps me. It may, and, it also, and it also might help you out. Some supports like, do you have your coffee there? Do you have um, your music playlist ready? Any kind of support will do, but you gotta be clear with it. And so in understanding that, you can now ritualize your work or habitualize your work. Understand that your ability to concentrate is as strong as your commitment to train it. So train your muscle slowly and surely you will become more focused. You will be able to apply more deep work into your life. The second tip that I have for you is to embrace boredom. We don't know what to do with boredom. Most of us don't want to embrace boredom because 
I don't know. It's just human nature is just not sit around and not do anything. But that, that, but that actually helps you with applying deep work. He mentioned a quote that says, idleness is not just about having a vacation. It is actually necessary for getting work done. And I believe in that. I've been able to take short and mini vacations in the schedule that I have. And it helped me become more inspired. It helped me become more motivated. And so what I did when I became idle, I embraced it. I embraced doing nothing. I embraced boredom. I didn't try to focus on or fill my schedule with shallow work or things that would distract me in the long run. I just focused on being there, being fully present in the moments that I was taking idleness or being in an idle situation. One way that you could do this is to respect your downtime. Now, downtime is basically what you do, or some people call it cool down. Um, it's what you do before you go to sleep. It's what you do before you take a rest or a breather. It's what you do before you actually sleep. And a lot of people don't take their night rituals very seriously. And that's the reason why they don't also have a very good morning rituals. So if you want to be productive in the morning, the secret is actually so you if you want to be so if you want to be productive in the morning, the secret is actually found in the rituals that you have in your bedtime. Now, respecting your downtime allows you to just flush out toxins from your mind and it will help you recharge and actually make you more productive and more efficient in the following day. Understand when you want to embrace boredom, it's okay. You don't need to do anything or think about anything. Also, a key thought is when you're working, work hard. But when you're done, be done. Do not bring the work that you have to the other areas in your life. Life is not just about doing the work that you have. It's also about experiencing different memories, creating new experiences with the families and the friends that you have. So when you're working, work hard. But if you're done, be done. Okay? The third tip that I have for you is to limit distractions. Now, I won't be able to point out every distraction there is in our generation, but I want to help you out by asking, by giving you these two guide questions. The first one is, what is your goal? Like, if your goal is to finish this project, is to write a book, the second question that you need to ask is, what are the key activities that supports your goal? Now, for me, if I have a goal of writing a book, uh, the key activities is researching about it, reading more books, um, going to Google Books, reading more articles about it. And when I am clear about that, I'm going to ask myself if the thing that I am doing right now is aligned with the key activities. And if it's not, then probably it's a distraction. So now that I'm clear with that, I know that when I'm scrolling through Facebook, it's not really relevant to the key activities that I want to have or that supports my goal. So that is a distraction and I have to remove it or at least limited. He also talks about, and it's also a very interesting and amazing idea, do not take breaks from distractions, take breaks from focus. We don't realize that our default approach in almost anything is to go to social media and to embrace the distractions that we have, but we don't realize that it's actually impairing our ability to focus and to apply deep work in our lives. So make sure that you also become intentional with using social media, with using, with allowing the distract the, with allowing the distractions to come into your life. So for example, you said that this is gonna be your time where you check social media, where you just scroll through TikTok, Facebook, whatever you're using, that's okay. Maybe that's your leisure, but you gotta make sure that after that time, you're not going to do that anymore. If you say that um, I can scroll through Facebook from 9.30 to 10 p.m., then do that. But after 10 p.m., stop scrolling Facebook. You got to be strict with yourself. You got to be fulfilling the promises that you're currently making to yourself because you don't realize in the long run, it's actually becoming your default thing for anything. Once you're not doing anything, you're on social media, which is kind of scary because it destroys the ability for you to focus on what truly matters. Also, please put more thought in your leisure time. Your leisure doesn't just need to be watching more series on Netflix or playing more video games. It's, it can actually be talking with a friend or a video timing or FaceTiming a relative or a loved one. It can be something more thoughtful like playing an instrument or painting or taking photos or just dancing while playing music. It can be all of those things. You can be more creative and it's better that you have a quality alternative for the leisures that you have. The next one that actually helps me is creating, the next step that I wanna share with you is to create artificial deadlines. 
There's this thing called the Parkinson's law, and it states that work expands as to fill the time. Work expands as to fill the time available for its completion. So what it's saying is that if you say that you're gonna work on this project for two months, it's gonna basically take you two months to finish it. But if you said that you're gonna finish the project in just two weeks, you're gonna be able, or the chances of you actually finishing the project in two weeks will also be increased. Because free time, when we have that kind of free time, it's much unstructured and it's something that our brain just allows us to procrastinate. If it's not urgent, we're not going to do it. That's why I believe that deadlines are one of the best motivators that we can have. So create this artificial deadlines in your, in your mind. So if you have a project, try saying, okay, I need to finish my first chapter for this night. I need to get a title for this night. And somehow, you'll be able to do it if you just pressure yourself just a little bit more. And if you think about it, it just really makes sense. Once you have fewer time, you'd actually respect the time that you have more. When people usually have less money, they would be more careful in spending it because they know that the, the resource that they have is limited and so they gotta be more careful in spending it. That's also the same with time. When you have limited time, when you have a... Sh a when you have fewer time to do a task, you'll be more respectful and you'll be more careful in using the time that you actually have. Therefore, you're going to remove all the distractions and you're going to apply deep work on doing that. The last strategy that I want to share with you is to schedule everything. I'm a big fan of this. Basically, what you need to do is to schedule everything that you need to do from waking up, from eating breakfast, from finishing your morning routines, from applying deep work in your areas, from finishing the different tasks that you need to do. You got to put it in your calendar because when you do that, you'll be able to become intentional with it. And also, you just be reminded on what are the things that you need to do for the day. There's this concept called time blocking. It's basically when you just block the time that you have for a specific task that you need to do. So I use this. A lot of people are using this. I just used Google Calendar for this. And basically, the day that I uh, have for the next day, I basically time block it to make sure that I am intentional about it. Now, a lot of people, time blocking is not working for them basically because they think that having a time block is just being about rigid and just having that constraint in your schedule. It's not about that. It's about being thoughtful about your actions. It's about being intentional with your actions. Now, you need to also apply a little bit of flexibility in your time blocking. So for example, you weren't able to do what you uh, said that you were going to do in this specific time. Give yourself five minutes to 10 minutes to readjust the, um, the remaining schedule that you have so that you'll still be able to feel fulfilled. You're still intentional about the things that you're doing and it won't destroy your self-esteem. And this is important because the more that we try to put things on our calendar or in, even in our to-do list and we're not following through on those, what happens is we destroy a little bit of our self-esteem. It's like we're making promises to ourselves and we're not fulfilling it. So don't do that. Give yourself some kindness. Allow yourself some flexibility and adjust. It's okay. There's a lot of things happening that are out of your plan and that's totally normal. And those are the strategies that I want to share with you on how to become more focused. I basically learned all of them here in this book. If you want to get a copy of this one, the link is below where I bought it. You can also use that. And yeah, I guess that's it for this video. I just want to give you a final word on deep work. Deep work is very important because a deep life is a good life in any way that you want to look at it. So I hope that you apply deep work in all of the areas in your life. And I pray that you'll be able to produce more high quality work in your life. And so that's it for this video. My name is Alec Cuenca. If you want to learn more about the things that I'm doing, click that subscribe button, like this video. I also have videos about love and relationships and also more about personal development. If you want to learn more about them, just check it out here. And again, guys, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. Till next time. Peace.